Hey guys, Mono here. Operation Harsh Doorstop came out on Early Access a few days ago and reception has been... Well, let's just say things could have gone better. Both myself and other YouTubers have made countless videos talking about how bad the movement and the animations are, how uninspired the graphics look, and how this is a huge disappointment to fans of the genre and not worth your time at all. But you know what? I was wrong. I mean, it's still a pretty shitty game, but let me explain. I think the best way to go about this is to compare Operation Harsh Doorstop to something I think we are all very familiar with. What if I told you I made a very cool spaceship and then showed you this? Well, unless you're 4 years old, you'd probably be pretty disappointed. And if you are 4 years old, then turn this off and go tell mommy and daddy they need to be better parents. You'd be disappointed with my spaceship because you were probably expecting something like this. You see, the problem is Operation Harsh Doorstop isn't really a game, it's a starter kit. The game is just the example shown in the instructions manual to give you an idea of the type of things that you can create with these tools. And this is precisely why it's currently sitting at a mixed review score on Steam. Those that don't recommend it are judging it as a game, and those that are recommending it are judging its potential as a set of tools for future mod development. Now, I've already had a few encounters with a rabid fan base that seems to think that this game is like the second coming of Jesus or something, criticizing me and others for not understanding how OHD will transcend all the other lesser games that I enjoy and become the one game to rule them all because it provides the blueprint and tools to make a game better than Squad or better than Arma or better than Hellaloose. I'm just not seeing the immense potential this thing has. But can you blame me? If I go to Blue Drake's YouTube, which in case you don't know, Blue Drake is like the head honcho of this entire thing, you will find videos with titles like We Just Released Our Game For Free or How To Make Our Game Better. Well, Blue Drake, my man, you done messed up by calling this a game. And trust me, it hurts to say this because when I look at you with those blue puppy dog eyes, it breaks my heart, man. But a game has direction, it has an idea of what it wants to be and what it wants to achieve. And by your own words, if there are details missing or things that have not been implemented yet, it's not because I don't know you all don't want them. It's because I've intentionally not done that because I'm waiting to see what you all want. Purposely leaving things out for the community to figure out or build on their own is not usually what a game does. As a game, Operation Harsh Doorstop lacks any direction. It doesn't know what it wants to do or what it wants to be. As a project though, it's one of the most interesting and promising developments that I've ever seen. And I'm almost 40 now, so I've seen like 40 years of stuff. Well, 38 actually, but you get the point. Operation Harsh Doorstop has an identity problem. It's being marketed as a game when the people it actually appeals to is the modding community. And that's not to say modders aren't gamers, but most gamers aren't modders. Most people downloading and playing this will launch the game, play a couple of rounds of multiplayer and go, this is it? And they'll probably uninstall and never look back. But to the people that grew up playing mods like Project Reality, Forgotten Hope, or the original Counter-Strike, we know how amazing mods can be. And if we had been sold on this as a project and not a game, maybe we would be looking at it with a different set of eyes. That's the true premise behind Operation Harsh Doorstop. Every mod ever made has been restrained by the limitations of the game that it was built upon. They were all held back by having to adjust to the way that the base game handled things and presented its content. OHD is at its very core, at its very foundational level, all about the deletion of those restraints. It's about giving the community the ability to build what it wants the way it wants. Let's take Hella Deuce for example, which if you watch this channel is a game that you are very familiar with. Hella Deuce is a World War II shooter that has a couple of problems. Every map has to be the same exact size. Every map is limited to the same type of vehicles and tanks. It doesn't matter if the Panther existed or not when the Battle of Kharkov took place, you can spawn a panther because you have to be able to spawn a panther in every map or in no map at all. That's the way the game is built. I remember when the Battle of Kursk was announced and I asked if they would make it so more tanks spawned on that map than on all the other maps given that Kursk was like the largest tank battle in history. But unfortunately no, it's limited by the same default vehicle spawns as all the other maps. And that sucks. If Halidus allowed modding, which it doesn't, a mod would probably be severely limited by this type of design. The idea behind OHD is precisely to eliminate those problems and allow way more versatility, and it's free 
so anybody and everybody can try it out and develop things for it. So the truth is, in that regard, OHD is pretty cool. There are still some valid concerns. I honestly don't understand how the game part of OHD will carry on in the future, how they are going to handle things such as mods for the animations or weapon handling, for example. Will those get incorporated into the base game if someone does a really cool animation mod? What happens if those new animations suddenly break another mod someone else is working on? Do they run different parallel versions of the base game or how are they gonna handle that? What will happen if different mod groups work on similar projects, potentially developing the same assets and weapons in parallel, wasting a ton of time and effort, which could be avoided with a more organized approach to the whole thing? Well, those are the things we are just gonna have to wait and see, I guess. Making a cool mod takes years. And I think a lot of people that are really excited about this game are completely delusional when it comes to their expectations. There are people out there in the YouTube comment sections thinking that OHD will have the same amount of content as Squad does in a few months from now. I wouldn't be so radically optimistic about this, but the potential is definitely there for this to produce some absolutely amazing mods in a few years. I do think having a more focused direction for what they actually want their base quote unquote game to look like would probably be a good idea since limitations aren't always bad. They can actually help focus and concentrate a project, but I guess like everything else about Operation Harsh Doorstop, we'll just have to wait and see. Going back to my previous video on this, should you download this if you like tactical shooters? Well, probably not. There's just not a whole lot of content, and even if you go download the additional content that's available right now, it's just not very compelling. But should you keep an eye out for what comes out of this in like a few months or a few years? Absolutely. I hope in the near future I find myself playing like a cool World War II mod and making videos about all the amazing content that's available. But until then, I can't really recommend this to anyone that just wants to boot something up and have a top tier shooter experience because that's just not what it is right now. And that's it guys. I don't think anybody's actually wrong here. I think a lot of people are judging this by what it is and a lot of people are judging it by what it can become. And none of those approaches are incorrect but those two cannot be compared at the same time because you're just talking about different things, right? So anyway, that's gonna be all for today. Let me know what you think down in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And as always, I hope I will catch you in the next one.